Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge Plays. In this show, we go through a specific Gwent deck in a bit more of a looser format than we're uh, used to in the big deck guide. So I'm gonna go through um, today's deck. Today's deck is the Fickle Nature deck. So we're gonna be using the Nature's Gift, new leader ability in Squiatel. So it's a Squiatel deck that focuses on using nature cards. And this deck, I'm really liking playing this deck. It has some great momentum. It generates lots of points um, really, really quickly um, and has quite a few removal options as well. So let's go through the cards really, really quickly. Uh, and then we'll head into a game so you can see how you can use this deck to get higher up in the ranking because that's what we're here for right so nature's gift is a new leader ability introduced in last week's patch it has symbiosis on its own which makes this a pretty unique leader ability because basically this means that your leader kind of has a passive ability that just is marked by a keyword so symbiosis which means that for any nature card you play you will generate at least a one power tree and a uh, wandering tree and so since your leader himself herself in this case that's because we're going to use francesca Findelbear's leader uh, model in the uh, deck as well so she has symbiosis as well so you generate a tree and automatically for any nature card you play so any nature card gives basically is boosted by one point um, we also get an order ability which gives us three charges of giving a unit that we can choose a vitality for two turns it needs to be one of our own units but of course we want to give vitality to our own units uh just took tactical advantage as our um stratagem because those five points are usually going to go into i'm just going to move to her to dunka so dunka is in this deck uh, she's one of the patience engines as she is called so she just boosts a random squad tail unit in your hand at at the end of every one of your turn so that gives you just passive points into your hand if you want to use your order ability you lose that ability but you can damage a unit by three so a little bit of removal then you might have noticed that this uh, deck is non-devotion but we still use etne etne young queen so she's only gonna go into her second form which is etne mother so we're only gonna get two young dryads which we're gonna each have symbiosis as well and Etne herself is not going to have uh, symbiosis it's um, a trade-off I'm gonna make because I wanted to add a few other cards in this deck that well are not Squirtel specific so we don't reach devotion uh, then of course Forest Protector is a non-brainer to include in this deck he uh, can play another nature card back from your graveyard usually gonna go into the um, either nature's rebuke uh, or, um, yeah, I often use it on uh, Dryad's Caress as well, just for the Purify and the six points we get from the boost and the, um, the Vitality, because we're always going to have a Dryad on the field. Uh, Circle of Life is also really interesting, and that basically gives us the three bronze nature cards that we're going to use the most. So Circle of Life, damage a unit by three, and give you two points in your hand. If you manage to kill something with that three damage, you can actually choose which unit is boosted in your hand. Only Squiretail units count, so that means that a few neutral cards that we use can't be boosted by this card, so keep that in mind. Uh, let's go back up, because we're gonna talk about those neutral cards right now. So Tristelekinesis. Obviously, she basically does the same thing as the Forest Protector. Um, aside from the fact that she doesn't pull it from the graveyard, you just play a copy of a bronze special card from either player's starting deck. So it could be one of your opponents, but nine times out of 10, you'll get at least one from your own, which is gonna give us another nature card, which is gonna come in handy to boost one of our units in the future. I'm gonna talk about him in a second. Then of course, Karate Heatwave. Um, I think it's still kind of required to counter double ball, double masquerade ball, so you can take out that scenario, or you can use it in the uh, very last round to take out a high powered unit in one go, or banish something else that might return later in the match. 
so definitely interesting. Also a special card which is going to come in handy for, yeah, I, I, I should just talk about him. Because uh, Harold Gord is in this deck as well. So every time we play a special card that is counted in the background and at the very end we play Harold Gord. He has a three base power and gets boosted by the amount of special cards you've played in the entire game. Uh, in this deck, he usually gets boosted by 10, 11, maybe 12 if you're really lucky, but usually around 10 or 11. Uh, so that's the amount of special cards we're aiming to play as well. To be able to do that, we of course also include Call of the Forest, enabling us to play any Squirtel unit from our deck and boost by one. So basically a tutor to get any card from your deck. Shaping Nature can be played twice and is still one of my favorite nature, favorite nature cards. Um, and gives you a really, really nice bit of flexibility. So either you play it with Veil, uh, giving you a six point boost, but Veil on top of that, which means you can actually counter poison like that. So if one of your units is poisoned, I often use Shaping Nature to just protect that unit with a Veil, so it can't be poisoned again, which is actually better to uh, than purifying. Um, aside from, of course, if you're facing Vincent from Morleham, but any other poison, it's better because you need to, your opponent needs to purify the unit if he wants to poison it again. And that has to poison it again to kill it. So that's three actions needed to take that out with just poison. Then Isengrim's Council is our second tutor, so a random dwarf, dryad, and elf from your deck. We only have one elf and one dwarf in your deck, so you know uh, those two cards which you're gonna get. Um, so the dwarf we already talked about is Harold Gort, so you have a guaranteed way of pulling him if you don't have him in the deck. Uh, and you can also use Forth to pull Isengrim's Council and then pull Harold Gort. So we have three ways, three, well four actually, because Call of the Forest can do the same. So four guaranteed ways to pull Harold Gort, which should be enough. Um, if you have Harold Gord, I often use Falf to just pull Shaping Nature in the first round. If you have her but don't have Shaping Nature, uh, enabling you to use Shaping Nature twice, which is also something you want to do. And then the elf I talked about is Ida. Um, the reason I put her in is because of the extra Purify. Um, the Purify is going to allow us to take out Defenders in one go, uh, which is really handy against Northern Realms. Uh, if you don't need to purify anything else, she still has Vitality, which also synergizes very well in this deck. So four turns of Vitality is going to come in handy uh, in combination with, uh, I'm actually going to move to her now, uh, the Hammer Dryads, because these are the power boosters of this deck. So they have Symbiosis, so you gain uh, one point on your Wandering Tree Ants with her on the board. But at the end of your turn, if this unit has Vitality, boost self by one. That stacks up really nicely with our leader abilities. What I do now, previously they were really vulnerable. Um, because the four power meant that you either had to preemptively put Vitality on that or boost them in hand to make them a bit more survivable. But now you can use your leader ability to boost the Hammer Dryad immediately by two points, bringing her to six by default which makes her a lot more survivable. So the only things that can quickly take care of that is six point damages. That's like uh, Giga Scorpion Decoction or the uh, Parasite card from Monster, stuff like that. Uh, or an Assassination if she's alone on the board, but she shouldn't be. Um, then we have the Duen Canal Guardians, which got a bit of a nerf because the two damage is now not immediate anymore on deploy, but it's an order ability. So, so you could lose those two damage, but it kind of brings that back to the same thing in Skellige. I kind of forgot the name. I think it's the Raider. Um, the Raider card that basically does the same thing, aside from the fact that it doesn't have symbiosis, but of course, Veteran. Um, so I think that brings that back to that level. Then of course Dryad's Caress is really interesting to purify against Nilf Guardian decks or getting rid of locks or stuff like that. And even without the purify, it's just really, really strong because it's a nature card, so you get at least one three hand. And then you get the three point boost, but also the three point vitality because we're always gonna have Dryads. Uh, Tempering is just there to have another nature card. It's a, one of my go-to um, mulligan cards. If I don't need to use it, I won't because the other nature cards are a lot stronger. And then of course, two abandoned girls, which in a pinch could also transform into a young dryad, giving us another symbiosis unit. Um, so that's the deck. Um, basically what we're gonna try and do now is head into a few games so we can showcase how this works. 
And our first match is against Nilfgaard itself. So that's always a bit annoying. I hate Nilfgaard, but I think everybody knows that by now. Um, as you can see, I'm actually playing the new board that you can buy to support the Gwent Open. And I'm also using the new fancy windy, um, yeah, Francesca skin. I'm gonna mulligan the young dryad and of course tampering, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So if we get ball, then I'm gonna be able to, no, it's gonna be tactics. Um, so Dunka is gonna get destroyed immediately. By an assassination, I could. Yeah, that's gonna get tourney chested. Ah, that's an annoying start, of course. The Dwen Canal Gardens aren't gonna do anything. Hmm. I'm almost tempted to start using Fav here. This is interesting. I never faced uh, a tactics deck with this uh, setup, but I'll start. I'll start simple. I'll start with the Dwen Canal Guardian. So that's probably gonna get tourney chested. Um. Because that's how this just works. So that means... So that starts at four, right? Yeah, so that's six tactic cards in his hand. Or their hand, I don't want to assume. Um, so there we go. A band girl. Okay. Interesting. Um, I think I'm going to do Falv. Since I have Harold in my hand, I'm going to do Falv into Isengrim's council because I know what to expect kinda ah, I was hoping for a hammer dryad so we could use that but yeah I'm gonna just use the dryad matron here um, and place that over here and then I can damage the um, abandoned girl like that that's fine and we get another point from the... Uh, yeah, I never talked about her. I added the Dryad Matron just because it's another Dryad. And it gives you a bit of a more passive booster than the uh, the Symbiosis units. It's just that simple. And since we're generating a lot of those units, we can actually... Okay, purify... Purify a unit. Interesting. You know what, since we're out of the range of the assassination now, I could put Dunka over there. And she's gonna get boosted by the matron, so that's gonna be fine. So that's six points that are just there. Okay, Artoyas Vigo assimilates. Probably gonna play another Duchess Informant. No, Bear Brigade. Not a problem at all. And that's a lot of points, but again, uh, we have a lot of nature cards, so we don't really care about that. So let's take care of that. Sadly, not on the top row. Uh, we still get two points every time, and we're going to get another point in our hand. So we're still equal, even though our opponent still has that, um, that crystal skull there. So that's four more points. Hail um, so that's going to just be some damage. They're starting out really, really slow. I don't know what they're exactly doing. Yeah, the point of the stack is also you need to be careful not to overplay because there's a lot of very fancy combos. Um, but you don't want to overplay those combos because otherwise you just lose out. So that put the matron into assassination range, which is probably what they're going for. Um, yeah, let's just purify... The Dryad Matron and hopefully a three and no on the top row on the melee row. God damn it. Okay, that's not a problem. We can still we can still get back there, so that's not a problem at all. Um probably with shaping nature so adjacent. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So that makes her survive as well. So I have eight points with shaping nature. That gives us eight and two again, which is ten. 11, so that's 29, so that's fine. And just place uh, the normal boost on the Dwen Canal Guardian. Sadly, again, three triants on the ranged row in a, in a row. That's uh, annoying. Um, but that's basically gonna be it. I think I'm gonna stop it there, unless my opponent now passes. Yeah, okay. That's fine. 
that's fine. I was hoping for something like that. So let's put that one canal guardian over there. And that's going to give us enough points because that gives us two points. And there we go. First round to us. And we still get some nice hand boosting. That is fine. That is really, really good. Uh, karate. Probably save that for last. Because now we took the first round, so we have last say, so Gord should be good. And that's actually a perfect hand. I don't have to change anything about that, no. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, let's just pass. Gonna have to be careful with the uh, hammer tried. I'm actually wondering, do I have something fancy? I could still pull Etne, but Etne against Nilfgaard is always a problem. Because if they have that Mage Infiltrator card, then yeah, I have a bit of a problem. Okay, turn the chest. That's just pulling that for no reason. But I also need to remember that Enslave. Uh, it's probably a 6 Enslave, the, judging from the amount of tactics, tactics we've seen so far. I'm gonna check in a second. Could be 5 as well, so that's one Hammer Dryad and another nature card. I could use the Purify. And I don't really have anything else fancy because I can pull Etne with Call of the Forests. If it's an Enslaved 6, I'm gonna be in trouble because, you know what, let's get rid of that Nature's Rebuke. That's another Hammer Dryad. I'm gonna pull that one. Okay, that was too bad. Is it 6? Yeah, it's at 6. That means that I can't put down a Hammer Dryad because it will get attacked immediately. Okay, okay, so that was a griffin from the board, by the way. You can sometimes hear the griffin in this uh, in this board. You can see you can see the paw print at the bottom. It's a really cool board. And of course that Francesca skin is just awesome. I'm just blabbering again. Um let's play it simple first. So let's just play the abandoned girl. If we get Turny Chouse, okay. we get Turny Chouse, but at least that's out of the way then. That enslave just worries me. Because if that hits the Hammer Dryad, then they will be able to just use that to their advantage, and I want to avoid that. I'm going to assume there's a Vincent in there somewhere as well. And so that was four, only four tactics. Interesting. So if they play, if they play Tourney Joust now to get rid of that abandoned girl... No, Marching Orders. Okay. Theon. Hmm. I'm gonna purify that immediately because I don't want to risk um, getting hit by something like... You know, there's a lot of nasty stuff in Nilfgaard, but I'm guessing it's gonna be... Um, Tony Owl. What's his name? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see it when it gets there. I kind of forgot his name. Um, so now, let's use... So that's why Ida is here. Uh, Ida can purify that defender status away immediately. And get rid of that. So now we're six points behind, but that's not that much of a problem. I'm gonna keep those vitality charges until we actually need it. So that's our second tactic. So that's our second tactic. I could technically bait out the enslave, so I don't have to worry about it. Because if he tries to enslave that Ida, if I can just use... Um, yeah, I'm gonna do it like that, I think. Um, so let's play Call of the Forest first. And do that on Adne Mother. So that's seven and two of those. Another world. I don't care. I'm gonna put one of the vitality charges on one of the young dryads and then one of them on Ida in the hopes that they're gonna just try and pull Ida. Because Ida gets some of the extra points after the vitality, so I'm guessing they'll wanna go for that. And there we have Damien. Yeah, there we go. They triggered it. But of course, that's not gonna help. Um, so that's what I was was hoping for. Uh, so now let's transform the um, the abandoned girl over here into a young dryad. So that's three symbiosis units on the field right now. Um, then we're gonna use the forest protector 
to pull that nature rebuke from before and kill Damien. That's weird that we get Damien, but that also means that the other guy is still in the deck, probably. So let's just turn that off. I still have an option here. There we go, Stefan Skellen, that was the one I was hoping for. Um, he is on the right side, so even if I pull Assassination instead... This is kind of risky, but here we go. Three hands Rebuke! Nature's Rebuke! No! Crap, okay. That's not good. Um, obviously I'm gonna go for the Circle of Life then, that's stupid. Um, because now, oh, there's my cat. Um, now we're gonna have to put it on... Yeah, it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, let's just put it on Stefan as well. And end it there. Okay, that's gonna be sad. That's gonna be a double bribery, probably. I'm just gonna put the cat away. Bye-bye. There we go, double bribery. It's gonna be less useful, I think, than other times. Because, yeah, they're gonna get one young dryad every time. That is eight points. Unless they pull a nature card now, that's going to be something extra, but that's only 8 points. It's not amazing. And I still have a few options here. And I can, I can by the way, Karate Heatwave that 14 point uh, Vanandol Elite in the back, so that's going to be fine, I think. So they get that, but I'm not really worried about that, so let's just do... The Hammer Dryad now, put her in the middle, so she can't get assassinated really quickly. There we go. That gets her the vitality she needs. So that gets us four points ahead, but that yeah, seems to be looking fine. So Tony Joust... Is that on the Hammer Dryad? Ooh, no, that's on one of the Young Dryads. Um, oh, I really want to karate that. Yeah, I'm gonna karate that uh, that 14 pointed over there. So that's 14 points gone. What's next? Are they gonna just take out my young dryads? Probably. So seize or the tree ants. Depends on what they. Ooh, that was not a good. Okay. Um. So now I have to count, because just an 8-point boost gives us 8 points on the Hammer Dryad, but if I do 5 and then 2, I get 9 points out of that, so the Vitality is actually better. Um, so there we go, Vitality on the Hammer Dryad. There's only one card left, so if that is Vincent, that's gonna hurt, but I think I have about... Oh, it's Viljefort, so it's just as bad. That is just as bad, but that's going on the... Yeah, it's going on the melee round. That's how <laughs> we get the other hammer drive. Okay, there we go. Finish this off, this off with board. It's a nine point board to me. And there we go. So that's how you play that. So, especially Gord needs to be a last card, obviously. Um, and then the heat wave is also something you should keep until last because that just gave me 14 points. Um, or, of course, if you bump into the scenario. Let's jump into another one um, that goes into who against the shield wall. So that's basically the, be <laughs> the best archetype at the moment. And they get first say, so that's going to suck. Um, yeah, typical Quent. I'm probably going to lose this one, but uh, at least I'm going to try and do my best. So Mulligans, this actually looks pretty good. Um, so let's just get... Young Dryad out of the way, and maybe get rid of the... Um, hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't have Gord here. Probably should get rid of the Matron, because it's not a nature card. Opponent goes first, which is always bad in this case. Um, I do want to win that first round, but I'm guessing we're going to get bombarded with everything. Because Northern Realms is really, really strong at the moment. Um, if you want to do something similar, by the way, I have almost the same tech on the channel explained, but with the Uprising leader ability instead of the Shield Wall. But you can swap it out for Shield Wall as well, works just as well. Um, but let's focus on this match here. So what I want to try and do here is we can just set up the Hammer Dryad and give that a little bit of vitality with our leader ability. 
that Francesca skin, it's really cool, but it takes like forever to do that animation. Um, but that gives us six points to start with, which kind of negates what the frigate does. So the frigate generates two points as well, but our, um, our hammer drive does this automatically. Um, and the reason why I'm putting the hammer drive up here like that is because I want to avoid... Um, I want to kind of bait stuff like Ansi as the Bloody Baron early. Because if that is out of the way, all the better for us. But let's put the Dren Canal Guardian up there as well. So give us two symbiosis units. So now we're getting... Oh, excuse me. It's really going bad in my stomach here. There we go. Boiling oil. I was expecting something like that. Now. Um, I could pull a nature card with Thorf. But that's going to be... Really early. I think I'm just going to apply Vitality with Ida. Although I do lose my Defender removal after that. So let's let's not do that. Because I don't, I don't want to lose that Defender. So let's just play uh, Fov. <laughs> let's play Fov into Call of the Forest. And then we'll use Call of the Forest to get Dunka out on the field. So that gives us hand boosting. Uh, hand boosting is really nice. And then we're going to use our Vitality Charges to get that Hammer Dryad going. So I want to make that as big as possible. So that needs to be a very juicy target for our opponent to focus on. Um, there's one Boiling Oil gone. If we can get like Ansius or Bloody Baron out there, that's going to be really, really nice. Okay, so that's just a Karak Marine. Boosting four onto... Yeah, the... Okay. Yeah, fine, I'm just going to use Shaping Nature now then. Um, let's just use it and use the normal 8-point boost and make another juicy target out of Fall. So that's another 10 points over there. And we get actually on top of our opponent's point gain there. But we spent one, well, a few more golds here. I also haven't seen Amphibious Assault yet. Ah, okay. Raynard. Raynard now. That's a bit weird. Um, I don't have a circle of life, sadly. Otherwise, I would have done that. But, you know what? I'm not gonna even going to kill the rain Because I'm not expecting to win this first round, actually. Although I could. Although I could. This is a, this is a difficult one. I think I'm just going to keep boosting the hammer dry to just bait out the um, the Ansias and Bloody Baron. Because like this, I can get to equal points and I still continue getting my uh, hand boosting. I actually don't want to boost Etne. Okay, so that's a little incitement. That's going to go up to 8. So that's 12 points. Um... Nothing too juicy to hit, actually. Uh, and I don't want to... Yeah, if I get hand boosted on, on Etne, I'm just going to take out Raynard over here with the uh, Nature's Rebuke. That's going to give us a two point... Yeah, that's perfect. Because now, if they pass, I actually can't go on top of that. But they're probably not going to pass. But if they want to do something, they're going to have to do something big. There we go, Bloody Baron. That's exactly what I wanted. We still might face Ansees, but that is exactly what I wanted. Because um, the Bloody Baron taken out is good, because that's one of the major threats, aside, of course, from Ansees, but yeah. Um, okay, that's fine. Let's just pass. And that's that. We do get, still have that triple shield wall there. While we actually use two charges, so I'm not expecting to win this match, but... Again, it's Northern Realms. It's really hard to win uh, if you're not being just as aggressive as they are. Um, that's Gord. That's good. Although I don't need Gord. I have Is Isengrim's Council, so I can pull Gord with Isengrim's Council. Corrupt the Heat Wave. Oh, this is going to be annoying. Because if I don't get a Bronze... Ah, okay, I do. <laughs> that could have been really risky, but there we go. Young, young uh, abandoned child, abandoned girl. That gives us our uh, pulse bronze, so let's just do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Really curious how this will pan out. 
I'm guessing it's gonna pan out badly, but you might be surprised. Uh, so that's not what I want. That's also not what I want. That is definitely not. Okay, so I'm gonna get the oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, so that's really bad because yeah, I want to pull Gord with his Grim's Council. So that's just okay. At least that's that. You go first. Yeah, Ancest is gonna grab that hammer right probably, but might as well bait it out. I was born with it. I shall die with it. There we go. Born with a tree and die with a tree. That's apparently how hammer drides do that. And there we have Amphibious Assault. Okay, so they have it in their deck, but it was sadly too late. Aha, that's a shield wall on Visogota, but that's I think that's my prime target now. So that's six and a shield, but that's gonna go. That is one of the best cards you can actually Karate Heatwave, so I don't even have to think about this. That's just take that thing out because I don't wanna I don't wanna deal with it. I definitely don't wanna deal with it. Now what I'm gonna try and do here, and it's ridiculous by the way. Um I'm gonna try and get that hammer dry, because it's at eight already. We know it can't be reset anymore because the bloody baron is gone so it can only be dueled by Anseus. there's only two shields left so Anseus starts at four maybe he can get a boost from varaxis if he plays varaxis first but i can count with all of that so i think um i'm gonna play ethne first and now we can use shaping nature next if you don't get Anseus now it's gonna depend on that we also have another Nature's Rebuke if he's if they're stupid enough to play Ansys and something like that, but okay, that looks fine. So let's just play Shaping Nature now with the 5 Vitality. And this is one of the riskier plays, I do admit, but at least that gives us Vitality until the end of the match. Well, aside from one turn, but who's counting? I am. Um, so that gives us a nice, nice advantage, but it's all on the hammer triad. <laughs> so, gotta be careful. Um, next up we're gonna probably take out that Temerian drummer. Or not. Oh, interesting. Okay, so they removed the vitality, but we have Ida still, so I can just add four more turns of vitality, which gives us the same thing. So that is fine. They're really afraid of that. Okay, so they wanted to remove that Vitality, but, aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So this is interesting. So that gives them a shield on Seltkirk. So that's gonna do seven, hit the shield. Um, but that leaves us with 12. And then seven again, leaves us with five. So the hammer right will actually survive that. So it's five back, two back, three back, and it's over. Um, I think. Okay, let's just play Trist Telekinesis and see what pops up there. Um, we actually do get, I think I'm just gonna put tempering on it. So let's put tempering on it, making it even bigger. Making it a bigger target than it already was. So now putting Southkirk on that gives him 14 damage, but other than that, it's gonna die. And then Anna Stranger, but Anna Stranger is not gonna do anything. Oh, that was really stupid. Because um, now we can use Nature's Rebuke on Anna. That's just better than ever anything else. Um, and that goes up to 26. So now we still, that's going to be the same result. So 16 off, and then Varax is going to reset that. Okay, so he's going to take out... They're going to take out the... The sooner the better. Um, I could just go for it completely. I mean, it's, South Kirk is not going to survive, but... Probably still has Ansias. So I'm going to have to be careful here. I think I'm just going to put it all in the Hammer Dryad. Because the hammer right is gonna take out either of them. <laughs> this is 
<laughs> this is this is so weird. I'm just gonna put put everything on the hammer dryer. So that's 33 points on the hammer dryer. He's gonna take that out. But then I still have court and the duelists are gonna be gone. So there we go, and Prince Ansius. Um So, we have two duelers on the field now, and I've wasted my nature's rebuke. Um, yeah, I guess we're gonna have to end it with this. So that's a 16 point, a 16 point gourd, a 15 point gourd. But yeah, this is not gonna end well. Another warfare card, is it gonna be another boiling oil just to weaken? Oh, there is no... Wait, what? Ah, yeah, of course you can do that as well. Um, but Ansys is gonna... So I... I is gonna give that a shoot up to 10. But it still dies. And then Ansys is gonna die as well. <laughs> wow, oh my god, this actually worked. This actually worked! <laughs> okay, that was awesome. Didn't expect that. I mean, that worked out perfectly. So, as I said, if you can bait out the Bloody Baron, you can make a target so... He just waited, they just waited too long to use the Duelists. If they'd done that sooner, I wouldn't have been able to make uh, a Hammer Dryad that big. And yeah, she just wiped the floor with everything. <laughs> Duel my Dryad, he says. And then they all die. In Brokkeland Forest. Okay, that was great. I we got some more uh, journey levels out of that. So that was that was amazing. Couldn't have couldn't have gotten uh, better matches than that. Okay, so that was really fun. A really 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 nice. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that because I really like playing this deck, but it's not always that um, nice to play. There's a few things that it struggles with, especially higher powered units. Uh, some monsters is something that can really out tempo this deck. Um, but other than that, you have the tools to take out Nilfgaard. You apparently have the tools to sometimes take out Northern Realms even. But you gotta be a little lucky and try to out-tempo them, which is uh, really, really tough to do. So just try to take out their, their biggest engines like we did with Anna. Um, that was a really good uh, hit there. Um, and especially that Rainid as well. They're, they're all cards that can generate a lot of points if left untouched. So try to take out those key threats. And here's the deck list one more time, that's also probably very interesting. Um, so it's very similar to my Shiro deck, although it's not similar at all because it's not non-devotion, it has a different leader ability. It just also uses a lot of um, nature cards. Um, but it gives you a lot of tools. You can go either to the defensive side, which we did in the last round, with that hammer right that went to the moon, and or you can be really aggressive and try to take out anything that comes across your path. And then finish off with Gord, which is almost guaranteed, I would say. Um, if you don't have him in your hand, you can pull him with Isengrim's Council, uh, Falve, or Call of the Forest. Any of those three will do to pull Gord. Just keep that in mind. And Gord is almost always like at least 12 points. Um, if you pull him with Isengrim's Council, you get two points on top of that, and Isengrim's Council counts as a nature card, so that's another uh, point on Harold Gord. So that's why you get those big cords, like the 15 one at the end there. So that's the deck guide. That's two uh, very successful games played with this, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little episode of Gwent Edge Plays. And if you want to see more, we have that Shiro deck I just talked about. There's a deck guide for that. Uh, and there's also a deck guide for basically the deck that we've seen just now, uh, the Northern Realms deck, uh, but with Uprising instead of the Shield Wall ability, which is just as viable. Uh, it just doesn't focus on that greedy duelist um, feature too much. It has Ansias, it doesn't have uh, Seldkirk, so that's gonna be... It, it's it's a little more interesting than what we've seen right now, the shield wall that's all over the place. But hope you guys enjoyed this episode, thanks enormously for watching. Uh, if you want to talk on Twitter, you can do that as well. You can find me under at Trophynut, that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk. And uh, yeah, if you have any other tips, just leave them in the comment section down below, and we can talk there as well if you want to. So thank you guys enormously for watching again, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Thank you, and goodbye.